All right, welcome back to Married to the Game. Hit us up on Twitter if you feel so inclined, at the FF Dynasty. We're going to keep going with these running back rankings. We, we're at number eight now. We kind of alluded to it last segment. It's no surprise. I'm going Josh Adams. It's Josh Adams. I'm, I'm all about some Josh Adams. I was ready to pump and come in here and try and defend him against Penny and, and put him at seven and and fight you on it real hard. Um, man, and then I read like that NFL draft profile breakdown and they just sh- shit all over him and like, he's a <laughs> sixth seventh round pick at best and who josh adams yeah how he's got like some awesome qualities but he also like sucks and i was just like those, I don't, guys, I don't, those guys know everything i don't think that's the case lance zerloin i don't know that that's <laughs> everyone that gets you, mad at lance around this time of the year yeah well we beat him to it this year we, we, we we've been coming out with all this stuff before they could even get anything up on uh on the nfl.coms but they're up there now um i don't know i Part of me still wants to take Josh Adams over Rashad Penny. I just I'm, I think he's better at creating on his own. I, I think he's got better short area quickness than Penny. What do you Negative. think? You disagree with that? Yeah, shot it down. It's because what you you thinking of the times when he was he wasn't playing healthy? Maybe. I mean, I'm thinking of the times that I as much tape as I could have watched on him, and I've watched a decent amount of Notre Dame games because they're on a lot. Um, I I don't think that that's one of his strong suits. I don't think that is. Lateral quickness is is super great. Um, I think, but he's but I'm okay. To, I'm okay to forgive that because well, the like, lateral. I'll give you that. The lateral quickness isn't necessarily the best, but he he gets north and south super right. fast. But that's not creating on your own. Creating on your own is like when you get over to the outside and you're one on one with somebody, or you need to juke somebody out of your shorts. The fact that you're running somebody over doesn't mean that you're really. Well, he can, he can still, your still sidestep you, but he's not gonna he's not gonna uh, get the edge. He, he's not like running to the sideline. He's not he's not the fastest, but I mean he'll exhibit some patience on like a stretch run, and he'll plant his foot and he'll accelerate north and south or north very fast. Like I like that's that short area burst. That's what I'm talking about. Like getting from zero to sixty. I feel like he, when he's healthy, he's just as good, if not better, than Rashad Penny. And the, the long speed, I feel like, is right there. I think he he was clocked at twenty two something miles an hour versus no, NC I, State. I think he's got pretty good, some pretty good long speed. I think the burst isn't isn't quite as good as 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 maybe Penny's is. I I, I don't I don't think the short area quickness or uh, or burst is as good as as your saying it is i would and maybe it was with better his little. freshman year when he was like super healthy and, and he's dealt with a, a decent amount of injuries and and he tore his acl but he he played well through the injuries that he sustained yeah. which i think speaks no, a lot think, to him i think that's fantastic you're playing you're playing through a, a good bit of injuries that could easily sideline anybody and you could use it as an excuse but he he played well and at, at times was averaging nine yards a carry and was in the heisman uh talks there for a while and was just absolutely blowing the doors off week after week just huge run after huge run game breaking runs um i i think that you know i'm okay with him not having the greatest burst maybe and the greatest short area quickness or lateral agility um because he is is the no nonsense runner that will get north and south and plant his foot one time and get up the field which is kind of you know what i like about him um, I do think that's kind of why I, I like him going into the NFL, and I, I think that's a good mold for an NFL running back to be able to just kind of go ahead and, and get what's there and, and be able to get extra because there is good burst and good speed, but I just don't think the burst is, is great. Like, I don't think it's something that you're like, wow, look at that burst from that huge man. And that was like the biggest knock they had on him on that, that draft profile that I read from NFL.com was that he has no short area quickness whatsoever. And I'm like, I think I think you're underrating well, him here a little when bit. When he goes to make his moves, he does have to gear down a little bit and he doesn't get back up to speed as fast as I would like him to. But when he does just plant, when he decides to just plant the foot and get up field, that, that's when I'm interested in what Josh Adams is bringing to the table. Well, I'd like to interject that I believe when Josh Adams truck sticks somebody, I could clock you know click that under the uh, column of creating on creating your own. on his own <laughs> yeah for sure i think if you knock Thank somebody you, on, i think if you knock somebody on their back and you keep it moving you could just call that creating on your own yeah, yeah. oh i would just sure yeah. sure 
But a spike lateral literally. quickness. You the, just create it on your own <laughs> through that. In the, yeah, in yeah. the other cat. Fork in the road, I went straight. Him. You didn't juke in the him, other you bullet just pushed points, down. In the other bullet points yeah. of creating on your own. Are juking yeah. and jiving. Dude yeah. had five and a half yards after contact. Right, which so is that's why creating I'm, which on is your why own. I'm, no. <laughs> and this is like real yards after contact. This isn't like. Against like tacklers. Skewed long runs, which he did have. He did have like six runs over 60 yards. Which is why I'm into him. He's got a ton of yards after contact. He, I think he runs very physically. I think he fit, will fit the mold. If he goes to the right situation, I feel like he'll fit fit the mold in, in a nice pounder. And I think he exhibits at time. If you go back to 2016, you saw him catching some balls in this LSU game. At the end of the season, you saw him catching a couple balls there. Um, one, you know, caught caught some in stride. Didn't didn't have to break stride. Caught some kind of contested out in the flats there with with guys in his face and made made did create on his own and make that guy miss. The, um, the hands in regards to the hands, like they're. There weren't too many receptions to be seen. Most of them were handsy. Um, I think he's pretty quick to turn up field. There were some pretty painful concentration drops that you saw. There's a big one in 16 at the end of the Virginia Tech game where it's fourth down and they throw it to him and he's open to get the first and there's time running out and they're down and it's a it's a bad drop, bad look for him. Yeah. But, but he, he did have 21 receptions in his sophomore yeah. year, so that's something. And that's something. With Kaiser and 16, he they threw it to him a, a, a little bit more, and you know he caught caught some caught some good balls in that year. And I think you know, like I said, the last game of the season in the LSU game, it was rainy, nasty, sloppy game. He was kind of struggling to get. They really they were struggling to get anything rolling on offense. Um, I thought he had a the, even though the stat sheet doesn't say he had a good game, he had a lot of good. Kind of grind it out, powerful runs, dragging dudes down the field against a tough LSU team that you know that they were keen on stopping this run because that's what you know old Kelly wanted wants to do and is known for doing. They're gonna especially in the slop, like you're sure. gonna you know pound it down their throat. And I, I thought there were some really nice runs that you saw from them, just carrying a, a bunch of defenders, making one cut, getting up the field, getting three or four yards, or or even you know seven to ten yards on, right. on those carries. No, there absolutely. Wasn't a lot there. He's a he's a banger in the strongest sense of the word. He looks the part of a true NFL running back. He drags defenders and he pushes piles like he's a pile pusher. Um, he he always seems to find a way to dive or spin forward for a couple extra yards. I just I like he just plays so much more aggressive than a Rashad Penny. I just I really like that style. Like is it is it bad to have stiff hips? Is are, are stiff hips a super bad quality? Because there's times when it lo- they look pretty stiff, but I then mean, there's times people, when he looks like he's got some wiggle. People don't like the stiff hips, but there's been plenty of running backs who have been called stiff hipped and have done just stiff fine in the hipped. NFL. Right. Stiff hipped. I mean, if, he runs upright, but he's if, tall. If you're good, you're good. I do. I don't like the fact that he's got these little bird-looking legs when he's out there. They, they look, I think the legs <laughs> look fine. They look like little. I think it is because he's so tall and he's got a lot of leg. But it, they don't. They don't. They're not. They're not big legs. He's got they're, a lot of legs. Little. They look like they could be introvert if if or uh, inverted if bow-legged. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> bow-legged chick. Nah, man. I, part of me wanted to hate on him for his 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 stiff hips, but then I mean. Looking at like the USC game, he was putting some jukes on some dudes, and he was showing some hip swivel, as they say. Yeah. Um, I don't. And again, he was he fought through a lot of injuries in this in this season, and it's and, a, it's and a great well offensive line. True, they got a first they round a, left tackle coming out, and and a and a left guard. That left side of that line was was fantastic. Um, so well, let's take it to a little sound clip here. I got a little a little sound clip of what it's like to get inside the mind of Josh Adams. I would, like Notre Dame's got a ton of money behind their media program. They pump out some awesome uh, media and hype type videos. You watch this video, you're ready to like draft Josh Adams. But let's let's take it inside the mind of Josh Adams. If you could basically slow him down as he's diagnosing a play, this was pretty impressive. Let me play it for you. But if you could slow me down, if you could slow me down, what would it sound like? Sound. Like? Free snap read. Scan the field. Locate the free safety. Don't give away tendencies. Inside zone. Inside zone. Two power shuffles. Downhill. Read the backside A to B. Get inside out and scrape paint. Scrape paint. Scrape paint. Scrape paint. Attack the defender. Hips low. Explode. Explode. Tense. Tense. Hit to destroy. Stop and go. Stutter step. Limp shoulder. Stiff and lift. Stiff. Lift. Run. Run. Fast. Faster. Power. Cut. Quick. Turn on the speed. Turn on the speed. Confidence. Confidence. For God, for God, for my family, it's for my family, y'all my family, y'all my family, for my team, my brothers. If there's an award for that, cool. Yeah, 
Yeah. That's what it would sound like. If you could slow if me down. You could slow me down. After every time he scores, he throws up the 2 1 5. Philly boy. Yeah, I mean. Let the beat drop. <laughs> I'm sure that they're there. I feel like it's, it's he's one of these people that's people are pretty 50 50 on. You either love him or you hate him. Um, there's there's certainly some knocks that you can say about him. I, I personally love him. I like I like his game. I like what he does. I, I thought you probably didn't see the healthiest of guys in 2017 and he's still crushed. Um, he's also well regarded by his team for his humility and his work ethic. You got to love that. I mean, this dude. I think. I think he's. Even though there's a there's a, a good offensive line in front of him, I think he's a, a pretty smart player, and he knows what to do when stuff's there. Um, you, you, you opening run against NC State, you see the offensive line blocking really well for him. The the D the DN takes kind of a hard angle at him. Left tackle kind of lets him in on the penetration, but but seals him a little bit, and it's a little bit of a of a of a read option. And there's a there's a free linebacker coming off that same end that that they just let the left tackle in on. And at that mesh point there where him and uh um what's the quarterback's name? Winbush. Yeah, and they're they're having that exchange and they're using the read option off that free that free linebacker that's coming in and they they, they use it to slow that linebacker and, and make him think for a second. Um but he's coming in on the on a on a free on a free hit there. And as I said, that, that left tackle had let the D end in. Um and he he kind of takes that step right into the penetration where he let that D end in and that allows a little bit better of space and angle for him to then bounce it around where that D end was coming from. And it got that linebacker a little deeper into the backfield and allowed him to kind of get that edge a little better. And I just thought that was a, obviously it was a really well blocked play, but it was also a smart play and, and, and good intuition by Josh Adams on what to do right there. I mean, obviously the read option, you know, kind of led into fr- freezing that linebacker a little bit because Wimbush is a, is a threat to run the ball. Um, but I, I thought that was a nice, you know, play to kind of, to me, it clicked like, oh, that I thought that was a really good, he kind of leaned into where the the penetration already was and there was a defender and then got that free defender sucked in a little further and then yep. took a shot and busted a nice runoff to start the game. So, so you're saying you like the vision. He's, he's well, not- no, I'm, I'm just saying because there is a good offensive line there and there is good blocking, but you still have to make a smart, heady play and know what to do in that situation to, to get the run. Well, he's right. not wearing contacts. I, I like the vision. He's solid vision. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, I'm, I just... I love I love this dude, man. I think he's he's got that one cut downhill kind of style, and I think it's going to translate to the NFL. And I don't really care where he goes. I think he can yeah. go wherever. And I think that he's a little bit underrated in the passing game, and maybe he won't get his opportunity there, and maybe he doesn't score as many fancy points as Penny, and maybe that's why you should take him at Penny at seven over Rashad or over uh, Josh Adams at eight. But but I want I want Adams at eight for sure. We've said it multiple times that I I believe a lot of these running backs can catch the ball. Like, as, as, although Penny in the stat sheet has more and shows a little bit more versatility in that in that uh, passing game kind of repertoire there, mm-hmm. uh, Adams can certainly hold his own just fine. It may just not be as as uh, perceived that way, um, and there's not a, a a good amount of stats to really back it up. Uh, the other thing, I, well, one more thing that I like about Adams, man, is we, we mentioned it on the podcast when we talked about him, but even when he's not getting the ball and there's a quarterback run or something else, he's downfield laying wood. He is hammering somebody downfield. And that's just, he's a team guy. Just like you said, I, I, I love all that team kind first. of stuff. Yeah. So, well, that's going to get you opportunity and just the effort alone will get you opportunity. But you say that, that he doesn't have this, the catches on his, on his record to, to stack up against Rashad Penny. Last year in Penny's breakout year, he had 19 catches. And last year, um, Adams only had 13. But the year before, he had 20. Adams had 21. So Adams has more catches in one year, single year than Penny does on his record as, as any anyway. So like you said, there's people are picking and choosing who can catch the ball in this right. draft class. And it's not fair to the guys that they say can't catch. Not that anybody cares what draft Twitter says about these guys at all. But, you know, just you might have seen a couple of things happen in space where it looks like Penny's a better pass catcher, but Penny caught no more passes in college than, than Josh Adams did. Well, he, the total number of catches is, is a good bit more, I think. But Yeah, I think it's in the 50s versus the 30s. But but I mean, still, when you, when you look at Penny's game... I mean, Penny didn't have a ton. It's not no. like you can just be like, look at all his production. I mean, it was a solid amount. No, but he but looks comfortable and smooth in he the does. passing game. So. And, and I think Josh Adams does. He Maybe not as could. much. 
Good. there's some downfield catching and there's some in stride catching and handsies. Sure. There's also some concentration drops and all that that comes with it. But nineteen I'm, fifteen, that's uh thirty four and eight is forty two. Mm-hmm. Versus thirteen and twenty one, that's thirty four and seven is forty one, forty two. I mean, within a catch. There's like some other. some career button you could click that would give you these numbers. <laughs> Quick, I mean, I got well, quick math in my head. I got him within a catch a piece, so just don't give me that. Josh Adams can catch just as good as Penny. I don't, I don't know if that's. <laughs> you, again, you heard it here first. We're guys. getting a one star review on that one here. Yeah. Again, I don't know if that's the fact, but it's certainly you not guys the per, are idiots. It's certainly not the perceived value of Josh Adams and and Penny and, and, and you the, know and what, the big ca- pass catching department. Yeah. Well, you know that's just like. Uh, <laughs> Your opinion, man. <laughs> well, my opinion is is that the stats that Penny has for catches is within one catch of Josh Adams. That's not my opinion. That's the numbers. The numbers don't lie. I'll, I will say this about Penny. He's a smart kid, man. The dude is real good at math. I watched like this video where they were interviewing him before he came out of high school, and he they asked him about his stats, and he like rattled off every single number that he had, and it wasn't like he had memorized them. Like he was just regurgitating him off offhand like dude's good at math there's another video where he admitted to like being good at math like if you're good at math you got a good memory you're a smart kid i think that's that's definitely a positive take into here him going into the nfl just wanted to add that in we, we didn't mention i didn't mention it yet thought of it anyways decent chance at a wonderlick score let's let this breathe let's go to break we just gave you seven and eight a little bit of a tear break we'll come back we'll figure out who to put at nine I have a feeling it's going to be John Kelly. Well, let's go to break. We'll be back with more Married to the Game. 